folks, Trina Fergie here and welcome to my video. Today we're going to go through uh, the settings that I use on Pokemon Unite which help me get the Masters and also help me stay in Masters. So we're actually going to, if you just go into settings and go down to controls, these are the ones that are most important that you need to change um, because they don't all come the way that I currently have them set which is what I believe to be the, the best way that you, you can have them set. Um, for instance, the first one, opponent lock on priority. So. I have this set the lowest remaining HP value, which is, is most important. You, you, you need to make sure that this is, is what it's set to because, you know, for instance, if you've got a Snorlax that has lots of HP and, you know, maybe their percent's a little uh, lower, you will lock onto them versus maybe a Cinderace that's uh, absolutely destroying your team but uh, doesn't have anywhere near as much HP and you want to kind of get the finish on them. So make sure lowest uh, remaining HP value is selected. Next, one of the, the most important ones is attacking controls. So the default will be set to uh, just A, which just attacks nearby opposing Pokemon regardless of whether they're wild or an enemy Pokemon. So what would, would be best is because a lot of the time it's important not to just hit the enemy Pokemon. Um, it's important to maybe try and take farm from them. So I'll put a, a clip on the screen and let you see what, what I mean. But if you, you hit B, what will happen is you'll attack wild Pokemon instead of hitting A, which is, will attack the opposing Pokemon, which means that you can, um, like I said, if they're, you know, you're fighting over the bees or something like that, and uh, it's more important, rather than just doing damage to them, if they're, they're going to get away, there's no point in attacking them, they're just going to get the farm, escape, and then they'll be a higher level and come and kill you later on. So it's it's, it's not really uh, ideal. So a lot of the time what you want to be doing is attacking the wild Pokemon, trying to take them from them with your special moves, and uh, and then getting onto them. And, and being able to differentiate between them two things is really important. Next is the automatic basic attacks. So I've turned these off because I don't want my... Uh, a lot of the time, you'll see later, I'll, I'll show you, it's, um, you can put up uh, like a sort of a, an indicator to show whenever your uh, moves are getting stronger. So a lot of Pokemon, for instance, like Cinderace or Greninja um, or even Garchomp, they all have um, you know different stacks uh, before that they do a special move or their moves get increased in power or something like that. And automatic basic attacks, for instance, with the likes of Greninja or, or Cinderace will use your stronger one. If, if you're trying to save that up to kind of combo someone out with maybe a strong basic attack as well as a, a special move or something like that. Um, so I, I like to turn this off because I want to have as much control as possible over my gameplay um lock on icon i turn this off because i don't really like it but it is something that you can turn on and make good use of so it will allow you to lock on to different pokemon um so if you are in a fight and there's a lot of different ones around and you want to um target specifically let's say you know the the eldegoss uh support or you want to target the damage cinderace it is very good but it's also i find it to be a little clunky and a bit of a pain to use so uh, i personally don't use it but if you can get good at it i definitely would recommend using it um i think most people have kind of stopped using it because it just seems to be a bit of a pain um in motion uh, pursuit distance, this doesn't really matter because I actually turn it off because I don't like um, what this will do is it will uh, like sort of turn your Pokemon towards other Pokemon and try and get you to engage whenever you know, you're maybe trying to escape or, or move a different direction or do something different. So again, it's all about control and I like to uh, have as much control as possible. So I turn this off and then again, this doesn't matter because of that. And then scoring button, so hold down button is the way it's uh, standardized as. But what I would do is change this to press button because you can just spam it. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll just, until you cancel it, it will just continue the score, which means that you're not trying and trying and trying in case you're, you're missing it or something's going wrong. So the hold button definitely can just take a little bit longer. And whenever it comes down to, sometimes this game, it's, it's seconds, milliseconds um, for scores. So you need to make sure that this here one is, is definitely one that I would advise you, you change it to. Um, and then cameras follows moves. So this is good for the likes of Venusaur or Pokemon that have long, long range attacks where you can um, sort of see uh, the, the move and, and, and be able to pan the camera a wee bit towards that direction of the move to make sure you're hitting people with it and, and to see the, the end pro product, I suppose, of the move. Um, and uh, move aim follows movement direction. So again, this is very important. So whenever you're uh, you know, chasing someone down, 
or trying to escape from someone. The last thing you want to do, especially if you're trying to escape from someone and you're wanting to use a move like your dash moves or something like a, a volt switch from a Zero Aura or a, a, a Cinderace flame charge to get away um, and, and put a bit of distance between yourself, the last thing you want to do is go back towards the direction that they're in. Um, so, you know, moving and follows movement direction is, is very helpful to, to be able to move instantaneously away and, and get your moves off uh, as well if you're chasing someone down to be in the, the right direction. Now, a lot of uh, Nintendo Switch Pro controllers have snapback and um, I suffer from that issue a lot so it doesn't get rid of that but it does help in, in terms of the putting yourself in the right direction. So moving him snaps to nearby targets so again I've turned this off because I, again I just want as much control personally myself as, as possible so I turn this off just so I can uh, aim to exactly who I want to hit with, with my special moves or whatever move I'm using and then mini map position this is just personal preference I like it top left you can move it to the bottom right. Um, it's entirely up to you. And then uh, move learning controls. So a uh, single button, button combination, you know, single button, just get it uh, done nice and quickly. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, mini map hidden and mini map shown. This is the camera sensitivity for whenever you've got your mini map um, sort of up in the corner uh, and, and you want to move around it. Or whenever you bring it, like you can hit the, the uh, minus button to, to bring it out and then uh, move around it a bit more. Um, and it just gives you the camera sensitivity of being able to move around that. So again, you, you can put this up as high as you're comfortable with. I like playing it around here because a lot of the time I move my camera around where I am at the moment. Um, and it's not too much, you know, I will check Dread, I'll check Zap, those things like that. It is important and that's where the higher sensitivity does work. But I do like just um, having it a little bit lower than the, the maximum so that I can just uh, have a little bit more control over it. But that's just personal preference. If you can play on the highest, go ahead um, and then aim assist I just turn aim assist off because yet again um, I like to have full control of my character and I just feel that this is the best way uh, to do that so yeah that's everything for controls so now we're going to look at battle info and this is where you want to um, boost put on the boosted attack gauge so make sure this is on it is it does come off I believe it's been that long but if you put it on it means that you can see when your attacks are going to be boosted so um for instance greninja has three cinderace has three uh garchomp has like five i can't even remember it's like five or six but um by the time he gets up there you know you can see how long until the stacks are falling off when they're coming on and and uh how many more you have to go until you're doing the, the highest amount of damage or with greninja you know you've got your execute um same as cinderace and you can you can get that ready for uh, maybe a combo with your your other special moves so it just allows you to to be a bit more aware of the game um same with the cooldown decimal values you know i like to know exactly when it's about to come off it is only milliseconds but it is just the way i've always played sort of uh any any type of game that has uh moves on cooldown and things like that um so yeah these are the the settings that i've got guys and uh it's what's helped me um progress so far throughout the game um and if anyone has any comments or questions about any of it uh please feel free to to send a comment my way and, and i'll try my best to get back to you and, and give you the, the best advice i can um but yeah uh, if, if you don't mind uh you know giving any feedback on the video or, or interacting with the video, subscribing, whatever you, whatever you want to do, um, it, it would be much appreciated. Um, and just give me feedback because it is, I've just started uh, out and I would, I would like to know uh, people's opinions on, on um, the content that I'm delivering. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope that this helps you uh, get uh, further in the game. So yep, thank you very much. Fergie out. <laughs>